What is up guys? Thick Cacus here after all those Christmas dinners, let me tell ya. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be going over all of the brand new legendary weapons added to the legendary endgram loot pool with the Season of Dawn for Destiny 2. This was one of the most interesting and frankly great things done with Season of Dawn. Spicing up the legendary engram loot pool therefore spices up pretty much everything you do because everything you do has a chance to earn those legendary engrams and these can also drop from prime engrams as well. So, you do always have a chance to get some of these new weapons, and today we're going to be examining their stats, perks, and the god rolls you should be looking for. And so, let's get started. And the thing we're going to start out here is the old fashioned legendary kinetic hand cannon. Looking at the stats, this belongs to the 140 rounds per minute archetype, which is generally a favorable archetype, not quite as good as the 150 arguably, but also arguably the best on console. But regardless, looking at the rest of the stats, we don't have the best range, but the other stats are pretty in line with this archetype. Moving on from there, let's take a look at the perks. First off, in the second column, we do have accurized rounds to straight increase the range and improve on its main statistical downside. Moving on to the first perk slot, we do have quite a lot of good options. Slide shot, boosting range, stability, and reloading a portion of the magazine for sliding, demolitionist to improve grenade regen, Feeding Frenzy to drastically improve your reload upon getting a kill. Even Quickjaw and Firmly Planted aren't bad specifically for PvP, but I think the main things you're going to be looking for is Feeding Frenzy for, frankly, either PvP or PvE, and Demolitionist, and then Slide Shot a little bit more for PvP. In the second perk slot, we have a lot of great options to combine with those. Firstly, Kill Clip, giving you a damage bonus after reloading, is an absolute wombo combo with Feeding Frenzy. Getting both of those is going to be great in any aspect of the game. Also, Explosive Payload is going to give you more ad clearing potential in PvE, as well as drastically extend the range potential in PvP. That's another fantastic option. Let's not overlook the fact that Demolitionist, while it's usually competing with the damage increasing perks like Kill Clip, you can get both of those on the same gun, or even Demolitionist Explosive Payload would be another great option here. I should also mention you can get quick draw plus snapshot sights for faster draw speed and aim down sights time for the snappiest darn hand cannon you can get out there. However, it is time to move on to the Hawthorne's Field Forged Shotgun. This is a legendary kinetic weapon, and looking at the stats here, this belongs to the lightweight frame archetype of shotguns. The impact on this stat chart is a little bit bugged, but it's a little bit of an interesting archetype because this does the same damage, as you can see, as the rapid fire frame shotguns, despite shooting slower. The benefit is with lightweight frame, you actually move faster with the weapon equipped, and it has superb handling, and the range of 51 is going to be much better than the ranges of the the rapid fire frame archetype uh, shotguns. So those are the advantages and disadvantages to the stats of this weapon. Moving on from there, however, let's take a look at its perks. In the barrel category, we have some great options. Things like rifled barrel and full choke for PvP are fantastic. You've then got accurized rounds for straight more range. Again, great in PvP. If you're specifically using this for PvE, any of the magazine extended perks are great as well. Moving on to the first perk slot, we do have full auto trigger system, which is definitely not bad with a shotgun, but frankly, you don't really need it. Grave Robber isn't terrible, getting a melee kill reloads your magazine. Field Prep is not bad for specifically PvE. In the second perk category, however, we have some great options. Demolitionist is not bad. Really the highlight here, however, is 1-2 Punch. Hitting all pellets in a shot gives you massively increased melee damage. And that's going to be good in PvP or PvE, and it actually combines super well with Grave Robber, synergizing with those melees, those extra powerful melees that you're going 
going to be performing anyways. So if you get Grave Robber plus 1-2 Punch, I do think that is one of the better options out there for frankly either aspect of the game, but specifically for a PvP role, getting something like Rifled Barrel plus Accurized Rounds plus, you know, Full auto would be fine. And then opening shot specifically is phenomenal. Opening shot improves the accuracy and range on the first shot of an attack. And it is a significant increase. Uh, you know, the mind benders with opening shot snipes people. Don't overlook this perk for a PvP role. But also, if you're looking for something to go into a grenade-focused PvE build, Demolitionist, Full Auto Trigger System, and something like Assault Meg or Tactical Meg is going to be very good. You've got, you know, seven to eight rounds of pretty lethal shotgun. Each single one is going to give you a big chunk of your grenade back. All right, moving on from there, we have the Uriel's Gift Legendary Energy Auto Rifle. This, looking at the stats, belongs to the 450 RPM archetype. It is generally a more common archetype, but this is one of the most consistent and reliable auto rifle archetypes out there. The stats are, all across the board, pretty average. Moving on from there to the perks, however, we do have some interesting options. High caliber rounds and ricochet rounds are generally what you're going to be looking for first. And then in the first category, there really isn't a ton of great options, with the one that does stand out being firmly planted. This is going to increase accuracy, stability, and handling while firing crouched. And it turns out that firmly planted, specifically on console especially, makes guns into absolute laser beams. So combining that with some of the perks in the secondary category, tap the trigger for even more stability and accuracy. Uh, on initial trigger pull or potentially even kill clip or moving target could make for a very interesting auto rifle for PvP, again specifically on console. For PvE however, frankly I don't see anything that stands out. Kill clip is okay, but you're lacking something like Outlaw or Feeding Frenzy to keep it up all the time. And there's so many other good auto rifles out there, ones with multi kill clip and stuff. I think that this is specifically an interesting option for a console PvP auto rifle if you want it. Something I will mention, however, is that Triple Tap can spawn here, and I think it's very underrated. Having an auto rifle generally this accurate and easy to use, and combining Triple Tap with something like Disruption Break to give you a bonus to kinetic damage after breaking a shield, it's really easy to just plant this weapon over an enemy's head and just be getting a ton of rounds back thanks to Triple Tap, and that matters because we don't have a ton of things to increase the reload speed of this weapon, so you might as well just extend the period of time you need before you reload. But it's time to move on to the Alatha FR4 Legendary Energy Fusion Rifle. This, looking at the stats, belongs to the High Impact Frame Archetype, which apparently every new Scout Rifle Bungie is adding is in this archetype, seriously. Um, but this is, of course, a very competitive archetype. Stuff like the Air Until belong to this archetype. It is generally the best one for PvP, and it's no slouch in PvE either. Stats wise, decent range, but you know, this is all pretty standard for this archetype. Moving on to the perks, however, we do have some decent options when it comes to firstly the site being a medium zoom site for PvP, especially. But in the first perk slot, we really don't have anything phenomenal for PvE. PvP, however, we've got some great options. Quick draw, fantastic. Firmly planted is going to be really, really good because stability actually does kind of influence the bounce, the upwards direction of your spray of fusion rifles. So you can get way more bolts on a target if you crouch first with firmly planted and absolutely snipe people with it. Then in the second perk category, demolitionist and backup plan are great options. Kill clip is decent and snapshot for just like that really snappy fusion rifle. Snapshot plus quick draw is possible here and that is a kind of a wombo combo. But frankly, 
firmly planted plus backup plan, which is gonna give you a massive improvement to charge time when you just swap to this weapon. And frankly, it kind of breaks the rules of this archetype. The balancing factor is supposed to be that it takes a long time to charge for dealing out that much damage. Well, with backup plan, no it doesn't. So I think that plus firmly planted is kind of the wombo combo, the best role you're looking for in PvP specifically. And I don't think there's too much here for PvE, especially because the Sundial Fusion Rifle, the Gallant Charge, can get Demolitionist plus Rampage and Swashbuckler and all those uh, damage increasing perks, and that's just better. Now moving on from there, we have one of the highlights of this new group of weapons, and that is the Last Hope, Legendary Energy Sidearm. Looking at the stats, this belongs to the Omelon Adaptive Frame Archetype, so it's gonna fire in three round bursts, and the stability is excellent, range is a little lacking, but that's this is kind of common for its archetype. The perks, however, is where this thing really, really shines. Looking at that first perk choice, you have mainly Feeding Frenzy, which just goes well with a ton of different perks on here, but it's really gonna let you keep that damage up constantly. Quick Draw, not bad for PvP, I think specifically. Range Render for PvP as well. And then Grave Robber, not bad in PvE. However, in the second perk category, things get really interesting. We have Multi Kill Clip. Multi Kill Clip gives you a damage bonus after you reload based on the number of kills you got beforehand. And if you get Multi Kill Clip times three, that's going to give you something like a 60% damage bonus. It's the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to these damage increasing perks. And you better believe it's a wombo combo with Feeding Frenzy. In fact, a last hope with Feeding Frenzy plus multi-kill clip, there's kind of some initial tests going out there, and that actually might be better than the Recluse. And that is one of the most powerful weapons we've seen, frankly, ever in Destiny 2. And if this thing can really surpass it, that's absolutely insane. That is the absolute god roll I think you're looking for, frankly, in either PvP or PvE. It's absolutely insane. But if you don't get that, there are some decent alternatives. Dragonfly and Rampage are both pretty good in PvE, but specifically Rampage could be good in PvP as well. If you really want a PvP, like totally PvP focused role, going for something like Rangefinder or Quick Draw plus Tap the Trigger may be what you want for just that ultimate accuracy, but this thing is so stable, I don't think you really need it. I think that damage increase from Multi Kill Clip is just too big to ignore. But with that being said, it is time to move on to the last weapon we're covering today, and that is the Moss Epoch 3 Legendary Power Rocket Launcher. Looking at the stats here, this belongs to the Aggressive Frame Archetype for Rocket Launchers, which is going to be identical to the Bad Omens Gambit Rocket Launcher for an easy to understand example. And this is pretty in the middle of the road when it comes to Rocket Launchers for a balance of Blast Radius, Velocity, that sort of stuff. So it's not, not a bad archetype by any means, but looking at the perks here, we do have some very interesting options. Mainly, I'm looking at impact casing to just improve the damage for direct hits in PvE especially, so just more damage is great. And then for PvP, you're definitely going for black powder, which is going to increase the blast radius pretty significantly. Then you have some decent options here. Auto-loading holster isn't bad, but I think you're really going for tracking. Tracking is great in PvP. In fact, so much better than auto-loading in PvP, and it's pretty good in PvE as well. And then in the last perk category, Quick Draw is a pretty good option for PvP. Having tracking plus Quick Draw, not bad, but Cluster Bomb Increasing the lethality of every shot fired in all aspects of the game is, I think, the best option here. And the fact that you can get either impact or black powder plus tracking and cluster bomb, that's kind of like the overall best roll you can get on a rocket launcher. 
Only other thing I'm going to mention is if you really like tracking, especially in PvP, the combo of tracking plus snapshot sights to aim down sights faster, acquire your target faster, and get that shot off faster, that's tracking, is a potential combo, but I don't think quite as good as tracking plus cluster bomb. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.